Hello and welcome to your yoga class for this week. This is a new month, so we have a new theme, which is rest. I wanted to do this theme because I think we don't always have a lot of opportunities throughout our day or throughout our week to just be still and be quiet and to rest. So these classes, I hope, will give you an opportunity and most importantly, give you permission just to slow down and to rest. We're going to be doing our rest classes through yin yoga, which is quite a calming, cooling practice. If you have been doing any of my other videos, which I'm uploading to my regular channel lately, they are all inspired by yin yoga because in yin we tend to do longer hold poses. So we'll be holding the poses for three minutes to start this week. So because we're going to be holding the poses for longer, it is important to support your body as much as you can. So if you have yoga blocks, definitely use them for this class. If you don't, you can always take cushions or pillows. You can also have a blanket nearby so we can use it to, again, support us in the pose. And then at the end of the class, it will help to keep you nice and warm in your final relaxation. So go ahead and get ready, do whatever you need to do. And then I'll meet you back here when you're ready to go. We'll begin sitting on the mat. So find your most comfortable way to sit, sitting on a cushion or yoga block if you need to here. Then once you're there, you might just take a moment to lengthen your spine if you can. Relax your shoulders, close or relax your eyes. Unclench your jaw and undo any tightness from your facial muscles. As your facial muscles start to relax, just imagine that wave of relaxation falling down through to your entire body, relaxing every muscle as it goes. The hardest part is over now that you've made it here. So just honor and congratulate yourself for showing up and for doing this practice. With an exhale, you can start to open up your eyes, bringing yourself back. We'll start with a simple breathing exercise. It's called Nadi Shodhana. It's quite similar to alternative nostril breathing, which we practiced in some previous videos, but I will run through it before we start so you have an idea of what we're doing. So you're using your right hand and you're going to be bringing your middle and index finger in between your eyebrows, just resting on your forehead bone there. Then your right thumb will be used to close off your right nostril. You'll breathe in through your left nostril for the count of four. Then you're going to close off your left nostril with your ring and little finger. So you can just breathe out through your right nostril. Then we're breathing in through the right nostril, closing off that right nostril with the thumb so we can breathe out the left nostril. Breathe in left, close it off, breathe out right. Breathe in right, close it off and breathe out left. So we'll be doing around eight to 10 rounds of this. I will start the count with you and then I'll leave you to practice silently for a few rounds. So when you're ready, bring that middle and index finger up into your forehead. Close off your right nostril with your right, right thumb and breathe in for one, two, three, Four, close your left nostril, open your right nostril, breathe out for one, two, three, four. Inhale, one, two, three, four. 
Exhale, lift. One, two, three, four. Inhale, lift. Two, three, four. Exhale, right. Two, three, four. Inhale, right. Two, three, four. Exhale, left. Two, three, four. Continue at your own count. Once you've exhaled from your left nostril, you can remove your hand, coming back just to sit quietly for a moment. Noticing if there's any differences within your breath or within how you're feeling. Gently, you can start to open your eyes again. We'll move into our first yin pose, which is butterfly pose. So we'll stay sitting as we are. As you know, you can sit up on something here to make this pose a little bit easier. Then you're bringing the soles of your feet together. If you need to support your knees here, you can put your cushions or yoga blocks in underneath your thighs. Your hands will just come to hold your feet or your ankles or wherever they naturally want to rest. Now, we don't want to force our knees down. Just let them be here and with time, they'll find where they need to be. You can inhale to lengthen your spine and you can stay sitting upright or there is an option here to fold forward, dropping our nose towards our feet. Now we're going to hold here for three minutes in total. So once you've found a position which is sustainable for you, just try your best to be still. There are three principles of yin yoga. The first is to find your appropriate depth. So not forcing the body into anything, just accepting wherever you are right now. The second one is to commit to stillness. And the third one is to commit to time. Now, of course, if you find that your body is under too much strain and if you feel pain at all, then come out of these poses. Don't force yourself to stay for the full duration that I'm doing here today. So with all that being said, let's find our appropriate depth, feeling free to fidget and move around until you do. You can find your stillness by finding your breath. And then I will let you know when it's time to come out of the pose so you don't have to worry about that for now. Here in butterfly pose, we're opening up the hips and the groin. We're also stimulating our kidneys and all of those reproductive organs. So this is quite a nice pose if you ever have any troubles in that region or any urinary type problems. So now that we know we're doing really good work for our body, let's find our breath. Following your inhale all the way into your belly. Following your exhale all the way out of your nostrils. Mm -hmm. 
Now we'll prepare to come out of the pose now so you can bring your hands back to the floor or to your mat. Slowly push yourself back up. We'll release with some windshield wipers so you can lean back on your hands. Step your feet to about hip width distance apart. Exhale to drop both knees down. Inhale to pick them up and exhale to drop to center. And we'll do a few more like that. Getting rid of any tension that you might have accumulated in your hips in butterfly pose. You can pause the next time your knees are in center and from here we're coming into straddle pose. So we're bringing our feet out wide apart Remember, it's not about how it looks, it's about how it feels. So don't worry about your range of motion here. If your hamstrings are very tight, you can place blocks in underneath your knees or cushions. And you can also bend your knees so you have the soles of your feet on the mat or on the floor. If your knees are uncomfortable here, if they feel a little bit strained, just engage your quad muscles here to help to support your knee joint a little bit more. Now from here, we're going to be folding over our right leg to begin. So let's inhale to reach the hands up, rotate to the right, and then exhale to drop your hands either side of this right leg allowing your nose to fall towards your knee here. And we're gonna be here for three minutes. So again, we have a nice deep hip opener. You're also stretching out your spine in this pose. And you're putting some pressure on your digestive organs. So helping to kick everything into gear in there. Now, once we have found our appropriate depth, we're just waiting and we might receive an invitation to go a little bit deeper. And in yin yoga, this is a term called playing your edges. So you want to go to the edge of the pose, just where you feel it on a comfortable level. Then you're waiting for that invitation. Once you receive it, you might be able to go a little bit deeper into the pose, finding your next edge where you're still comfortable, but you are gone a little bit deeper. And then that pattern repeats after another while of waiting and being still. You get another invitation. You might be able to go a little bit deeper again. just a few more breaths like this.
Now you can keep your right hand where it is. Bring your left hand back behind you, looking at that left hand with your eyes. Then do a big rainbow across, so we've come into a side stretch. We'll hold here for two minutes or for however long is good for you. If you're here, you want to make sure that your chest is shining up so you're not collapsing on your upper body here and keep looking up at that left thumb. Now, if you've come into this side bend and if it feels a bit too much, if it's a bit yucky, then you can just stay with your regular side bend where we were. feeling whatever new sensations this pose has brought, waiting for invitations to go deeper if they're coming, if not, that's okay. And again, committing to stillness, just accepting this pose exactly as it is. Just taking one or two more really deep breaths here. When you're ready, you can slowly start to pick yourself back up to center. We'll repeat now going towards the left. So inhale to reach up, lengthen your spine, rotate over your left leg and then fold down. So we have a fresh side now, we're not as open through this right side of the lower back. So we're back to square one, waiting again. We're at that first edge. and Maybe with time we'll be able to go beyond it, maybe not. There's a saying in yoga, which is that we don't use our body to get into the pose. We use the pose to get into our body. So it just brings us back to not worrying about how we look here. Using this time to just drop our awareness inwards. Feeling all those sensations, following our breath and also noticing our thoughts here. So our commitment to stillness goes beyond just keeping the body still. We're also trying to keep our mind still. And it takes so much practice, but this is why we are practicing yoga. And you can use your breath to help you to detach from thoughts that are coming up. Anytime you notice yourself thinking about something, bring yourself back to your breath and back to your body. Just two more big breaths in and out.
You're welcome to stay exactly as you are, or you can come into that side bend by reaching your right hand back, making a big ro rainbow, and then trying to touch your right fingers to your left toes without collapsing your upper body. And we'll be like this for two minutes. See how soft you can become here. If you can make your face soft again, relax your jaw, relax your shoulders. Two more deep breaths here. You can start to gently reverse. You'll notice with yin yoga, once you release the pose, you have this urge to just do a big, a big sigh. So feel free to do that. It's getting everything out of your body that is not serving you, that doesn't want to be there anymore. So we've gone right, we've gone left, now we're going straight down the middle. So inhale again to reach up, exhale to hinge at your waist, dropping your hands down and then dropping your nose towards the floor. Resting here for three minutes. You might already have some thoughts about yin yoga. Maybe your body or your mind rather is telling you that this is boring, that you could be doing something else with this time. But I would encourage you just to challenge those thoughts and see where they have come from. Is it an external force or pressure that is telling you you're wasting your time? or that you're too busy to do this? Or is your body actually very happy and grateful? And do you think you will actually benefit from doing this by staying here, by practicing these poses? For our last minute or so here, I want to invite you to drop into your body, to feel the parts of your body that this pose is affecting. It might be your hamstrings, your hips, your back or your spine. And I just focus on sending your breath into whatever part of your body needs it the most right now.
take one more deep breath in. Super long breath out. And now your next inhale can start to slowly bring you back up. Now you can bring those feet back in beside each other. It can take a little bit of time to get them back in. And once you're ready, we'll come into child's pose. So just a brief child's pose for today. We're only gonna stay here for one minute. So you can keep your knees together and then bring your forehead to the mat or onto your hands here if needed. Alternatively, hands can reach for the front of your mat or they can come back to rest next to your feet with your palms facing up. We've found ourselves in a very healing and calming pose. So let's just bathe in it for a few breaths. When you're ready to come back, you can use a breath in to lift yourself back up into a seat. Now from here, we're coming into Sphinx pose. So we're coming to lie on the front of the body. Then when you're there, clasp your elbows with your hands. So this will give you the distance that you can keep your forearms apart on your mat. Once you've found that distance, you can have your forearms parallel to each other. Spread your fingers nice and wide apart. Your feet can be about hip width distance apart or even mat width distance apart, whatever feels best for you. Slide your elbows slightly out in front of your shoulders here. And if you find that this is too intense for your back, you can slide your elbows even further so you have less of a bend in your back. Now we're gonna hold here for three minutes. So we have a few options. You might just relax your back body, especially your glutes. But if you feel that this pose is putting a little bit of strain on your back, you can use your glutes to support you so you can squeeze them gently. Some more options here would be to place cushions or a bolster if you happen to have one in underneath your chest. So you're making, again, less of an arch with your back. Now, speaking of our back, this pose is amazing for your lower back. It's also stimulating your kidneys. And we're getting a nice stretch into our belly region, also stimulating those digestive organs, putting a little bit of pressure on them, which, as I mentioned earlier, can help to kick them into gear, especially if they're feeling a little bit tired or sluggish. You can keep your gaze straight out in front of you, or you can also drop your head here, which helps to stimulate your thyroid gland. Just find what works. And then we'll commit to the stillness in both body and mind. And I will let you know when it's time to come back.
Take your last three breaths here. Now we're lifting ourselves up into seal pose. Seal pose is similar to extended cobra. So your feet are nice and wide apart. Your palms can come back in beside your chest. And then when you're ready, you can scoop yourself up. So we have intensified that stretch in our back. So you can always come out of this pose. We will be holding for three minutes. But if that's too much, you can come back down and just rest on your belly or come back into Sphinx pose and just stay in Sphinx pose for longer. Getting a really nice stretch here for our stomach. And just a reminder, it's not about how it looks. Sometimes we might force ourselves up and into this pose and that is your ego which is trying to do that. But if you just accept the pose where you are, accept your body as it is, that is embracing yin yoga more. It is okay in this pose to lock your elbows if you want to straighten out your arms. And just one more minute here if you can. Three more of your deepest, juiciest breaths. Now this is really where you might feel that urge to sigh it all out. So let's bring ourselves slowly back down onto the mat. When you're there, you can come to rest in crocodile pose. So making a pillow with your hands, resting a cheek or forehead onto your pillow. Then bring your big toes to touch each other and let your heels flop out towards the edges of the mat. Let your body digest those poses that we've done. Now we'll prepare to bring ourselves back up to sit on the mat. So move slowly and gently. Once you're there, you can sit with your legs out long in front of you. We're practicing shoelace pose now. So as you know, when we're sitting on the mat, you can sit on a cushion or yoga block. Elevating your hips does help to open them a little bit more. So it does help you to come into these poses with a little bit more comfort. So once you're ready, we'll bring the right foot all the way to the outside of the left hip. So you're aiming to get your knees somewhat on top of each other. This is half shoelace and you can stay here, that's absolutely fine. But if you do want to go a little bit deeper and if you feel already a little bit flexible in your hips, then you can bend this left leg as well. 
So we have our left foot over beside our right hip. So turn this way to show you what we're looking like here. Now, wherever you are, you want to make sure that you can feel both of your seat bones pressed into whatever you're sitting on. So you can wiggle around, keep adjusting. And then we're finding that depth of comfort. We'll be here for three minutes. You can stay with your spine upright, or if you want to go a little bit deeper and to target your lower back as well, you can start to fold forward dropping your nose towards your knee. We have found ourselves in another hip opener, another opener for the groin and for the lower back. So find your edge first of all, and then just rest here. Find your stillness. You might stay at this edge for the entire three minutes or with time, you might be invited to go deeper, maybe walking your hands further away from you, dropping your nose lower to that top knee. I really enjoy these long hold yoga poses. I really enjoy yin yoga. I feel that the real benefit comes psychologically. It comes to the mind because as I mentioned earlier, when we hold these poses, thoughts come in and holding the pose and committing to the time and the stillness really allows us, first of all, to notice thoughts that are coming in, to be a little bit more aware of them, and then to challenge them. And I find that the more you can bring your mind back to your body when you practice a yoga pose, the more you can quieten thoughts when you're out in the world, when you're just living your day-to-day -day life and certain thoughts keep coming up we can really train ourselves to disengage from them and not to let them take over our day or to affect our mood. So I hope for you that practicing these long hold poses will be an opportunity to train your mind and to train it to work with you, not against you. Take three more big breaths here. Now it's time to slowly come back up and unravel your legs. You can take some time just to shake your legs, maybe move the knees up and down or shake the feet from side to side. And then we're going to switch to take it to the other side. So first your left foot will come to the outside of your right hip and you can stay here just like this or you can bend this right leg as well. Again, finding your seat bones wiggling around. Remember both sides of the body are very different. So what worked on one side might not work on the other side. We have to take it back now and find where our new edge is. So again, you can stay upright or you can gently start to fold forward. Here we will commit to silence, I promise, and stillness in the body and mind. We'll be here for three minutes.
Take two more big breaths. Now you can start to slowly undo. Sigh it all out if you need to. And we'll release with some windshield wipers again. When you're ready, you can make your way back down to lie on your back. Next up is happy baby pose. So you can bring your knees up towards your chest, make them wider than your torso and bring your arms in between your legs. Now your hands will come to hold your shins, your ankles, or maybe the outside or the inside of your feet. Your feet will be parallel to the ceiling here. Now feel free to find what works, hold wherever you can. You will still get the benefits of the pose wherever you are. Another saying in yoga is yoga meets you wherever you are. So you don't have to go into the full version of the pose to feel the benefits. The benefits will come to you at whatever version of the pose works for you. We're here in another hip opener a nice hamstring stretch. But we've also found ourselves in a position where our belly can really expand. Throughout this practice, we have been crunching forward on it. We've even been lying on it, kind of squishing it. So let's take this time to really use our breath to help open up our belly and our lungs exposing any cobwebs that are in there and then use your exhale to get them out. We're here for three minutes in total. For the last few breaths here, you can stay still or you can gently rock your baby from side to side, massaging your back muscles. When you're ready to release the pose, you can send both of your legs out long on your mat. 
coming into a brief Shavasana pose here. Letting your body catch up and absorb the poses that we've done. Now we'll end this practice with a reclined twist. Reclining at the end of the practice helps to restore equilibrium to the nervous system. And you're also getting a nice deep stretch for your spine, your back and your groin as well. So you can start by bringing both of your knees up towards your chest. Spread your arms out wide, left to right. Now inhale to peel your tailbone slightly off your mat and exhale to drop both of your knees over towards the left. Make sure that both of your shoulders stay connected to the mat here, that especially this right shoulder doesn't pop up. So only twist as far as you can keep that shoulder down. If needed, you can place cushions or yoga blocks in underneath your knees to give them a little platform to rest on. You can also put your blanket over you here if you're getting a little bit cold lying on the mat. Options to go a little bit deeper in this pose, only if you wish and only if you're getting those invitations to do so, is to take a twist into your legs. So you might be able to take two twists so you can hook your toes down to your calf and then retwist. So now you have a little bit more of an opening here in your lower back. Another option is to take this left hand and to place it on your top leg and then very, very slowly encourage it to go a little bit closer to the floor. Take three more deep breaths in and out. Inhale to lift your knees back to center. You can wrap both arms around your legs here. Give yourself a gentle hug. Noticing a difference within the two sides of your body. Now we'll go to the opposite side, spreading your wings out wide again, lifting your tailbone and dropping both knees over to the right. And you can stay just like this or you can cross your left leg over your right, taking that twist into your legs. Maybe right hand will come up onto the left thigh.
Take your last three breaths here. Now you can start to unravel, bringing those knees back towards center, giving yourself a gentle hug. And we'll release with some windshield wipers. Last windshield wipers of the practice. So when you uncover those little pockets of stickiness, you can even pause, just let the pose stretch it out. Now, if you have any last little bits of tension you need to get out of your body, or if you're craving a certain stretch or pose, feel free to do that now. We want our body to feel really spacious and loose before we come into our final relaxation. And then when you are ready, you can set yourself up in your most comfortable Shavasana pose. So if you do want to put on that blanket or do whatever you need to do to get really cozy. And once you're there, let your arms and legs explore until they find the perfect place to rest. I know it's tempting sometimes to skip this part of the practice or to question, do we really need to stay? And again, I just want to challenge you to think about where that thought has come from. What is telling you that you should be doing something? And what is telling you that you can't take a few more minutes to rest? Now start to feel this wave of relaxation flowing across your body. You might even imagine that you're resting on the beach right beside the waves. The waves are gently flowing over you bringing relaxation and then each time that they retract or go back they're taking back any stress or tension away from you. We'll stay here for the next few minutes allowing the body to completely rest soaking up all the benefits of the poses that you did and I'll let you know when it's time to come back.
we will start to slowly bring ourselves back now, making tiny adjustments. In your own time, you can come to lie on the right side of your body. Resting in whatever way you land. Taking some deep breaths. Honoring, acknowledging and celebrating yourself for showing up and for doing this practice. When you're ready, you can gently pick yourself back up into a seat. Finding your most comfortable way to sit. And when you're there, just close your eyes again. Finding your breath. Feeling this calm energy that you have created. And I just want to invite you to try to take it with you into the rest of your day. Just to approach things maybe slowly and with a little bit more ease. We'll take one more big breath in. As you exhale, you can gently start to open up your eyes again. And this officially concludes our yin practice. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this routine. Please let me know if you did below or if you have any comments, feedback, suggestions, questions. They are all super welcome. Please feel free to reach out. So I will see you next week. Until then, take care. Remember to rest if you need to and challenge any thoughts that are telling you otherwise. I'll see you next week.